Hey what is up everyone, welcome back to a brand new Roblox Studio video. My name is Floppy and in today's video we'll be going over how to make players be in first person in Roblox Studio. Now how the system works is you are able to make your players be permanently set in first person mode. First person mode is most commonly used in horror games and obbies, but can be used in pretty much any type of game. In the system I have also integrated a feature for the player to exit or I guess you could say pause first person mode to be able to interact with the on screen GUI such as your game pass shop or main menu. Well without further ado let's begin the tutorial. Alrighty so for starters we want to make sure our explorer and properties are enabled. If our explorer and properties are not enabled you want to head over here to the view tab, enable explorer and properties and they should show up somewhere over your screen. Now that you've got your exploring properties enabled, we're going to head over here to start a player, click on the drop down arrow next to start a player, and we want to head over to start a player scripts. We then want to click on the plus button next to start a player scripts, and we want to insert a local script. So now that you've inserted the local script inside of your starter player scripts, you want to head down to the description of this video, copy and paste script one. It's going to be called something like um, main first person script, somewhere along those lines. Go and copy that, bring that back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code and then paste in the new code. Alrighty, we have now inserted the code inside of our local script. As you guys can see, it is about 180 lines, 178 lines long. It's a fairly significant code. Um, I'm not going to go through every single bit and every single line of code or will be here forever. Um, but I mean, if you do want to get a bit of a better understanding, I'd recommend maybe taking it over to um, uh, like an AI software and getting it to summarize for you or add like these little notes where it basically tells you what all that does, what this does, etc. Um, or the video is going to be way too long. So I'm just going to go over the main parts here on where you can customize it to your preference. So firstly, we're going to head over here to line 14. Now you don't have to adjust this, but it's entirely up to you, but I thought I'd mention it. Now inside of the system, I also integrated a um, system where basically players can click a key on their keyboard to disable their first player movements. Because what can sometimes happen is you can actually get stuck inside of first person and you can't actually get out of first person to interact with the um, screen GUI, such as a game pass shop or a main menu. Um, which can be quite annoying. So what I've actually gone and done here is I've included a section where if the player has to click, in this instance, C, it is going to cancel or is going to disable their current um, first person movement and allow them to move their mouse around the screen to interact with UI. Now you're more than welcome to adjust this to a different letter. For example, say you've got C as crouch, then you may want it to be as a first person. You may want to have it as F, for example, F to disable first person and F to enable first person. Um, but for this instance, I'm just going to be keeping it as C. Another section is over here in this general area is you're able to adjust all of this, but I mean, it's not, I wouldn't recommend a, touching the sensitivity, smoothness or field of view and um, field of view. I mean, is a bit more customizable, but I, I would keep sensitivity at 0.1 and smoothest at 0.05. But field of view, basically what that is, is that is how much view the player is actually going to have in first person. Um, I'm going to keep it at 80. Um, we'll come back to field of view. I'm going to show you how field of view works here and do a bit of an example shortly, but I'm just going to keep my field of view at 80. Um, the only other area is over here in the line 27, local walk speeds. Now this is basically determining the player's walk speeds for um, their movements. So for instance, walking speed is going to be 16. So I'm pretty sure that is the default walking speed on Roblox. We've also got backwards speed. Now this is again, just basically, I guess you could almost call it reversing. We're just gonna keep it the same as the walking speed, but you're more than welcome to adjust that to something lower, maybe 10 or eight. I mean, it's entirely up to you. Uh, we've also got sideways speed. Again, we're just keeping it as our default walk speed, 16. Diagonal speed, and this is again just gonna be at 16. Now we've also got our running speed and running field of view. Now what I've also included in the system is a shift to sprint. So over here, when a player clicks shift, their running speed or their walk speed is gonna be increased from 16 to 25. Over here, you're able to adjust the running um, field of view. Now, basically, again, as I've mentioned, our field of view is how much view the player actually has. On default, we've set it to 80, but when a person is running, it is gonna change to 85, which is basically gonna give it that bit of a, I guess you could say sprint effect or um, like speed effect. Uh, you'll see what I mean here in a minute when we go and test it out. But you're able to go and adjust all of these to your preference. If you don't want running at all, simply 
go and change the running speed to 16 and the running um, uh, field of view over back to 80 and then you won't even know that the running is implemented in the system. So what we're gonna go do now, we're gonna head over here to our local script, click on the X button, and now we're gonna go and test it out inside of Studio. Now, I'm gonna be testing out here in this test tab where we have two players, but you're more than welcome to go and test out here in the main play or inside of the main Roblox page. All right, as you guys can see, we are now inside of the base plate, and as we can see, I'm in the first person mode. When I try zoom out, I can't zoom out. I'm now permanently in the first person. As you guys can see, I can see my legs, I can see my um, torso, I can see my arms slightly, and when I jump, you can see the general animations. Now, as you guys can see, in my shadow, it doesn't look like I have my head. Now, the reason for this is, on the client side, the script removes the player's head, so you don't actually see your head or your accessories, simply because the way we're viewing the camera angle what can tend to happen if we want it to have this nice kind of where we can see our um, torso and our legs and arms, etc. Then we need to remove all of our accessories because the camera angle will then collide, would have collided with all of our accessories, not giving us this nice first person. But keep in mind, even though we've removed it on the client side, it hasn't removed it for everyone else. As you guys can see on my other screen over here, I have still got my head as per normal. So does this player over here. So if I go and click over there as, and now jump on this account, you're able to see, again, I, where's the shadow? I've got no head in the shadow, but I still have a head on my player. Basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you now the uh, field of view. Now, this is our field of view, that is 80. Now, if I go hold down shift, we're gonna go into our running speed, as well as have a field of view of 85. So if I go and click W here now and go to sprint, as you guys will be able to see, I have a faster run speed and the field of view view slightly adjusts. It's a little difficult to see, but you can slightly see it. I mean, if my field of view was maybe 100 then, you'd be able to see it easier. So as we mentioned earlier in the video, I also integrated a system or a feature where basically you can now unlock your first person mode. So you can exit this first person mode that you're currently in to be able to interact with the in-game GUI or to either leave the game. So how we can do this is I've made it so when you go and click a specific key on your keyboard, your camera will then be unlocked. But if I go and click on C here now, you'll be able to see it actually unlocks my mouse. Now, as you guys can see, if I right click, I'm unable to move the direction of my player. But WASD or the arrow keys, I'm pretty sure, should all still be working. So you can still move your character with the legs, but you simply cannot turn direction until you go and click C again or whatever your uh, enable key is, and then you'll be able to change direction. If you guys are a little bit lost and you're needing a little bit of assistance here with today's tutorial, please do create a ticket in my Discord server and we'd be more than happy to help you out. But anyway guys, that is going to be it here for today's video. If you did enjoy, I'd appreciate it if you do consider subscribing to the channel, turning on the notification bell, and also do consider liking the video, I'd really appreciate it. But anyway guys, thank you once again for watching and I'll see everyone in the next Roblox Studio video.